Hi, my name is C. I'm a PhD student studying music and science. Today, I would like to introduce a Chinese instrument, Gu Zheng, and its music to you. The Gu Zheng is a plucked ziva, which commonly has 21 strings and is about 1.6 meters long. It has a large resonant soundboard made from wood and 21 movable bridges to tune the strings. Gu Zheng is tuned in a pentatonic scale. Gu Zheng players often wear finger picks made from materials such as plastic, resin, or tortoiseshell on one or both hands. There are northern and southern sty playing styles of Gu Zheng in China, each compressing schools specific to a region. The music I'm going to play, Yu Zhou Changren, is a northern style of Henan Zheng. It depicts a beautiful scene of sparkling sunset waters as we follow the boats of cheerful fishermen gradually leaving for home. This music transformed from a classic Chinese musical piece in the 1930s has now become one of the most popular Zheng solos in China. I hope you will enjoy it.
Hello, I'm Peter Magouzin and a former chemistry fellow of Murray Edwards. In this video, I want to let you hear some folk tunes from Slovakia on my accordion. This probably needs some introduction. Why Slovakian folk music? Well, I got interested because my father's parents came from that part of Central Europe a long time ago. When visiting the country myself, I found out about the interesting and still very alive folk culture, including songs, music and dances. Slovakia is a country in Central Europe in between Austria and Czechia in the west, Poland in the north, Ukraine in the east and Hungary in the south. After being part of the Great Moravian Empire at the end of the first millennium, at the start of the second millennium, the current territory of Slovakia was integrated into the Hungarian Kingdom, which later became part of the Austrian-Hungarian dual monarchy until World War I. Thereafter, Slovakia was part of Czechoslovakia until 1993, when it became an independent state. Slovakian folk music is inseparably linked with folk customs, songs and dances. The earliest inhabitants were peasants who settled in the lowlands along the river Danube, Va and Hron. In these western, southern and eastern regions, the peasant culture developed. The villages were very isolated, so there were great regional differences in the dance. Later, when orchestras travelled from village to village, outside influences crept into the folk music. As the mountain regions in Slovakia were hardly inhabited in the beginning, the Hungarian nobility encouraged shepherds to settle there by giving them rights and privileges. This brought in first Wallachian shepherds from Romania, then from Ukraine, and finally from the Polish side of the high Tatra mountains. Every immigration wave brought new elements which were assimilated and transformed into unique music and dance styles. Germans who settled in central and eastern Slovakia to work as miners, craftsmen and artisans also affected the music and dances. Their influence added to the rich variety of Slovak folk customs. The map shown here illustrates the ethnic diversity of the current territory of Slovakia close to the end of the dual monarchy with Slovaks indicated in blue, Hungarians green, mainly in the south and east, German red in the center and the east, and Russines yellow-brown in the east. Although at present some folk tunes may be played on a synthesizer at wedding parties as part of a modern popular music repertoire, traditional Slovak folk music is generally played by a small string ensemble, minimally consisting of a violin, viola and cello or double bass. For special occasions the band can be extended with a cymbal, which is a dulcimer, and clarinet. In modern days the accordion is often added for a harmonic accompaniment. After this short introduction it's now time for some musical examples. I start with two tunes from Western Slovakia. Polyphonic singing is popular in this part of the country and in the neighboring Czech region Moravia across the border. I play the first voice melody as it would be sung. A violin player would play the melody with much more ornamentation, but as accordionist I also have to take care of the harmonic accompaniment. In this area, the string orchestra would typically include the cymbal, which is the dulcimer. Slow melodies sometimes have a slightly asymmetric time signature, with the first beat a tiny bit shorter and the second beat a bit stronger.
Next, I will play four tunes from northern Slovakia, in or near the High Tatar mountain region, at the border with Poland, where the music band usually consists of a violin, viola and cello only, and the harmonic accompaniment is rather monotonous, almost a memory of the Gaidi. Many tunes in this region are in Lydian mode, which is a major scale with the four scale degree raised half a step. The first tune is from a Sbojnički dance, which is an old style let's dance with axes, related to the Otzemok elsewhere in Slovakia and Hungarian Ugros, which is a jumping dance also played on bagpipes. Tunes from Central Slovakia have a rich harmony, and slow dances tend to have a slightly asymmetrical time signature. New layer melodies with typical quint shifting are popular, with the second line in the strophe up a fifth with respect to the first line in a pattern A, A5, B, C. Songs sometimes have a palando beginning before moving into a danceable time signature.
to illustrate folk music from southern Slovakia, I've chosen a new layer Verbung from the southwest under Bratislava and a Chardas from the southeast under Kozice, the second biggest city in Slovakia. Most of the Hungarian minority live in southern Slovakia. Slovaks and Hungarians in this part of the country tend to have closely similar folk tunes, differing mainly in the song lyrics. Finally, some folk tunes from Eastern Slovakia with Russian, Ukrainian and German influences. I play a new layer style Chardas, a so-called Krucina and a modern style Polka. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. <laughs>